Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's your girl Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe today. I'm going to be reacting to Battle of Muta Prophet Stories Muhammad episode 45. So, without wasting time, let's get into the video. Universities has educated millions of people, but did you know the first university was founded by a Muslim woman named Fatima Al-Fihri? Check out our Muslim Heroes and Inventors series to find out more about Muslim heroes and inventors that changed our world forever. The last prophet in the world, last prophet in the world, last prophet in the world to show how to be closer to Allah. He is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Muslims were in a good position after they controlled the Quraysh with the peace agreement and the Jews with the Battle of Khaybar and the Bedouins with the different sudden attacks. After successfully completing Umrah, Prophet Muhammad decided to turn to Persia and Rome because they were planning to control Arabia with the help of the Muslim enemies. That would put Islam in great danger. So to spread Islam, Muhammad wasallam started to send some sahabas to different kings or leaders to invite them to Islam. As we said before, one time, Prophet Muhammad wasallam sent Harith bin Umar to the ruler of Basra. On the way, when he reached the border of Syria, the place of Mut'a, the bad ruler of that place destroyed him and wanted to fight the Muslims. Because of that, the Prophet did not have any choice. So, he immediately sent 3,000 soldiers to fight. It was one of the largest army after the Battle of Trench or Kandak. The Prophet told the soldiers that his beloved adopted son, Zaid Radin Ta'ala, would be the first commander-in-chief. If the enemy destroyed him, then Zafar Radin Ta'ala would then become the commander-in-chief. And if he was destroyed, then Abdullah bin Rawaha would be in charge as the commander-in-chief. When they reached Ma'an, they got the news that the ruler of Muta was waiting to fight with the Muslims with 100,000 Roman Christian soldiers. Unfortunately, this was the first battle between the Muslims and the Christians. The Muslim soldiers did not know what to do with only 3,000 soldiers. They knew that it would be impossible to win against a hundred thousand soldiers. After two nights of discussion about the situation, finally the brave Muslim Abdullah bin Rawaha Radin Ta'ala gave a speech to encourage the Muslim soldiers to fight against the enemy. In human history, it was an unbelievable battle between only 3,000 Muslim soldiers against 100,000 strong soldiers from the Roman Empire. The brave Muslim soldiers then moved to the battle in Muta. Both of the armies stood face to face. At first, the Muslims invited the Roman soldiers to accept Islam, but they refused to do that. And within a short time, the Battle of Mut'a started. Every Muslim soldier in that battle 
was fighting bravely. The Prophet's adopted son, Zaid bin Harith Radintala, was doing a great job as commander-in-chief. But suddenly, he was hit and died. Automatically, Zafar Radintala, then became commander-in-chief, was doing his job very bravely. Suddenly, he lost his right hand, but he kept on fighting, doing his job until he lost his other hand, and within a short time, he also died. Then the brave Abdullah bin Rawaha Radintala became the next commander-in-chief. Sadly, he also died within a short time. After all of the commanders in chief died, the Muslims became worried and did not know what to do. Then another brave Muslim advised choosing Khalid bin Walid as their next commander in chief. He was a great fighter and became a very smart commander in chief. He started to fight with all of his strength in order to protect Islam. He broke nine swords while fighting in the battle of Mut'a. When the sun had set, both armies went back to their camp. In the meantime, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the bad news to the Prophet. He became very sad and gave that news to the Medina's Muslims. He also told them about the great Khalid bin Walid Radintala and gave him a title as one of Allah's sword, Saifullah. The next day, the genius Khalid bin Walid Radintala changed the battle strategy completely. He put the frontline soldiers to the back and switch the right side soldiers with the left side soldiers. When the Romans saw a different setting in the battleground, the Roman soldiers thought that more Muslim soldiers joined them and became very worried. In that battle, the Roman soldiers were very surprised by how a small Muslim army was fighting so bravely. During the middle of the battle, Khalid bin Walid ordered his soldiers to move backwards to the desert. The enemy became scared to move forward to fight against the Muslims. The battle continued for seven days. Finally, the Roman soldiers thought that if they moved to the desert to fight with the Muslims, it would be impossible to win that battle. So they ended the battle and went back to their camp. The Muslims also respectfully let the battle of Muta come to an end. And that was the end of the battle of Muta that was fought in Jamad al-Ula during the 8th Hijri year. After the Battle of Muta, the Prophet Muhammad wasallam realized that Muslims needed friends around Syria. So, one month later, the Prophet sent 300 soldiers to Amir bin Aas, paternal grandmother's tribe, the Bala. On the way, he heard that the Syrians had many soldiers at that place. So, Amr Adintala sent a request for more soldiers from Medina. Muhammad wasallam immediately sent 200 more soldiers to Amr Adintala. When the Muslim soldiers attacked the enemy, after a short time, the enemy ran away. 100% of our operations are crowdfunded from our generous audience. We want to continue our Dawah mission and we can do so with your help. All donations are tax deductible 
and Sadaqah is Zariya, which continues to benefit you when you pass away from this world. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept your generosity and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you the highest reward to you and your family in this world and the hereafter. Very, very interesting video. Um, I don't get it. What was the battle of Mota all about? Was it because the other side didn't want to accept the religion of Islam or what? Because if anything, they could have been, they could have made um, acquaintances and just carried on with life. What I like about such videos is the fact that they bring to light what we don't learn in schools or maybe some of you learn it I don't know but otherwise they bring to light some of the things that we don't learn and this should be a way of us to learn things. Let me know what you guys actually think about this video. I loved it. I don't know if you did. Let me know in the comment section below and I'll be more than glad to read your comments. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in my next reaction video.